Hey everyone, this is Ryan with The Smart House, and in today's video we're going to be integrating the Roborock vacuums with Home Assistant. Now in the last video I went through in detail on how to set up the Roborock S5 Max vacuum with the Roborock application. If you missed that one, check out the video above. In today's video though, I'm going to show you how to integrate the vacuum with Home Assistant. Now in the last video I showed you how to use the Roborock app to get everything set up and customized. Well, you're going to actually have to remove it from that application and add it into a different one. Unfortunately, the Roborock app was split off from the Mi Home app a few months ago. And currently, the features are pretty much on parity with each other. The Mi Home app is, is what you use to integrate with the other Xiaomi products. But you need to use a, a weakness found in an older version of the app to retrieve the keys that are required to integrate with Home Assistant. So like most of these videos, it requires a bit of hacking to get it functional. So you'll need to get an older version of the Mi Home app and install it on your mobile device. So you'll need to use an old version of the Mi Home app to retrieve the token. So what is a token? Basically, it's the password that the vacuum uses to communicate with the app. Unfortunately, through the Roborock app, this is hidden and encrypted, so it's not accessible. However, there's an older version of the Mi Home app that can be used to retrieve the keys in plain text. So as in previous videos, you want to treat your token just like a password. It can be used to access your vacuum cleaner from an outside person. I highly recommend placing that token in a secrets.yaml file, which is what I'll show you on today's video. All right, so a couple things you're going to need to do this. One is you'll need your mobile device, either iOS or Android, to install the current and latest version of the Mi Home app. The second thing you're going to need is an Android emulator, uh, either Bluestacks or Knox. This can be installed on either your PC or Mac. This is required because iOS does not let you install an older version of an application. Also, it doesn't let you get into the system files of the application. This older version of Mi Home accidentally stored the, the token in plain text in a log file. So that's necessary for us to retrieve before we can go and apply it to the Home Assistant. Now, one thing of note, you're going to have to change from the Roborock app over to the Mi Home app. Uh, because if you try to change back, after retrieving the token, uh, it will reset the token and issue a new one to the vacuum. So you'll have to stay on the Mi Home app instead of the Roborock app, but that's not that big of a deal. I found that they have the exact same feature set on them right now, including multiple floors. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up the Roborock app on your phone and go ahead, delete the vacuum from there. If you don't do this step, then every time you reconnect it to Wi-Fi, it'll jump back to the Roborock app instead of going to the new Mi Home app. So all you have to do is just long press on the vacuum and then it'll prompt you to delete the vacuum from the application. Now you're done with Roborock and you can go ahead and uninstall it if you want to. But the good news is, is you won't lose your initial mapping, your history, or your room divisions. Uh, you might lose your customized names on each room or you might lose your, um, your, your strength setting uh, for either the vacuum or the mop. But those can be easily re-added into the Mi Home app. After you set up the Android emulator on your PC, you just need to go in and go to the following URL and install the older version of the Mi Home app. Now, I've tested this version. It seems safe to me. Obviously, sideloading APKs is always a risk. That's why I recommend using the Android emulator so you don't have to worry about any issues coming from there because you can just delete the emulator when you're done. All right, so before we begin messing with the robot, we need to go in and install the latest version of the Mi Home app. This will make it easier to go ahead and connect the robot to your home Wi-Fi and get it set up in the Mi Home app. Then we'll jump over to the emulator and install the old version, log in on that version, log in on that one, and pull the needed keys. All right, now that the Mi Home app is installed, let's go ahead and open it. All right, so now that we're in the Mi Home app, go ahead and select the region that you're gonna be using the robot in. Uh, you wanna grant it permissions for all the defaults. And then go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account uh, in this region, then you need to sign up for a new account or go ahead and just log in with your current Mi Home account. I have Mi Home accounts in both, in both the China region and the United States. So I'm gonna log into the United States because that's the one I wanna use this one on. All right, once you're signed in, then you can move on to the next step.
So the next thing you need to do is put the robot into Wi-Fi pairing mode. And to do this by holding down both the power and home buttons on the robot. So then we need to open up the current version of the Mi Home app and then press the plus button in the top right hand corner to add a new device. Now you'll see the vacuum is showing up here in the system. So we'll click that and then go ahead and add it to our Wi-Fi. And then I select my Wi-Fi here and click next and then it's going to start connect to the wireless. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi connected. All right, now that the wireless is connected, go ahead and select a room that you want it to show up in, in Mi Home, and then hit next, and it should show up with all of your maps intact. All right, now that our robot's connected to Mi Home, let's jump over to our Android emulator. All right, so here we are in the latest version of BlueStacks. In this video, I'm not gonna show you how to set up BlueStacks, but uh, you can just use the default setup. You don't actually need root. I just have it on this particular emulator. So we'll go over here to system apps and open up the browser. Now you'll wanna to go to the URL listed below. Uh, it's I've got a shortened version of it available in the description and here as well to make it easier for you to get to. So it's just tshouse.link slash me home. And that should redirect you to APK mirror to download this specific version of me home, the 5.4.49. This is the version that has the flaw in it that allows you to open up the log file in clear text. So we'll click on the see available APKs, click on this version right here on this variant, skip out of the ad, and then click download APK. Then go ahead and hit OK to download the APK file. You'll notice in the top here, uh, you'll get a check mark once it's finished downloading. So you can click that and click on the APK file. Go ahead and click install. This is going to sideload the older version of the app that you can then sign in with your existing Mi Home credentials from the last step. All right, once the app is installed, you can go ahead and click open. And the Mi Home app will pop up here. Uh, you can untick this and go ahead and agree to continue. Again, you want to select the region that matches uh, the region from the last step. So click, so in my case, United States. Uh, you can allow it access just like we did before. You notice the app looks a little different because it's the older version. Uh, click up here on sign in, and then you're going to want to go ahead and sign in with your username and password that you set up on the last step. All right, we'll go ahead and click sign in. And you'll see that your Roborock is already connected in to this version of the app. That's because it goes ahead and synchronizes with the same key as the app on your phone. Now you won't be able to open up the device because it is running a newer version or, or it was set up on a newer version. But now that it's connected in online, you know that you can access it. So we'll go ahead and here in BlueStacks and open up the Media Manager. We want to go ahead and navigate to the drive of the Android device itself. So click Explore. And then go to the Smart Home folder, Logs. And then you'll see this text log here. Go ahead and open it up. Use either, either application, it doesn't really matter. All right, now that we have the log file open, we can go ahead, since we're open in Chrome, we can go ahead and click on the three dots and go to find in page. So now we want to search for the word token. So when we scroll up here, you'll notice a token followed by a set of digits, both alphanumeric. You'll notice the name of your vacuum right here. So we want to take this token number here and copy it. And then we want to paste this into a notepad. Now again, I've blurred this out because this is a live token on my system. You notice right below the name of the robot is this field called local IP. You wanna go ahead and grab this and copy it. This is the local IP address of your vacuum cleaner, which is necessary for the home assistant integration. So copy that and then paste that into a new notepad. Now that we're done, now that we've retrieved the token, we can go ahead and exit out of BlueStacks and 
set up Home Assistant with this, with this token. So here we are in my test Home Assistant environment, and you'll notice that this one's pretty blank. There's, this is just what I use for development. Right. <clears throat> now that we have the token and the IP address, we can use the Xiaomi Mio platform that's built into Home Assistant to add the vacuum to Home Assistant. So if you, if you go to the link below, um, which is just a shortcut to the Home Assistant documentation, it'll take you to the configuration portion of the Xiaomi robot vacuum, and you can just copy this bit of code right here, and you'll want to paste it into your configuration. So then we're going to open up our configuration.yaml file, which you can see is pretty simple on this one, and go ahead and add that code snippet to here, making sure that your indents all match. Now, if you'd like to, you can include your host file in a secret.yaml, uh, or you can just go ahead and include it in plain text. It's up to you. But for the token here, we're going to go ahead. For the token here, we're going to go and use a use the secrets.yaml to hide our token, which I recommend for everybody. So now we've got the platform, the host IP address, and the token set in here. So I'll need to go into the secrets.yaml and add this exact same variable into here with my token. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the token that we retrieved in the last step. And again, we'll blur it out. And we'll save both of these. And switch back to the Home Assistant instance. Go down to Configuration. Go to Server Controls. And we'll go ahead and restart the Home Assistant instance to load that new vacuum in. So after Home Assistant restarts, we'll go back to the overview page and then you'll notice that here's the vacuum cleaner. You can see all of the information loaded out of the Mi Home app, like do not disturb times, um, how much time it's cleaned last, how much area it's cleaned, how many times it's cleaned, all that good stuff. <coughs> you can also choose within here to run the vacuum, you can pause it, you can stop it entirely, you can tell it to spot clean where it currently is, initiate a locate so that way the system knows where it's sitting, and then also return to home and dock. All this is nice, and that's okay. So there, so now you have a fully functioning vacuum in Home Assistant. You can stop here if you want, or I'll show you how to install two custom components that will make this. Will we'll add a nice custom card to your front end, and also give you the ability to bring in the map from your Me Home app. All right, in this section of the video, we will go over how to install a custom card for the vacuum. Um, it's this really nice looking custom card by a GitHub user, Denise Dalvin. They made this great card that kind of displays all of the information about the vacuum all in one screen. Uh, even allows you to put in things like the current status, this actually moves, which I'll show you down here at the bottom. You can put in uh, how many hours remain on all the different tasks or consumables on the vacuum itself. Uh, and then it's got this nice animation that it does while it's both cleaning and docking. <laughs> the simplest way to install this would be to use Hacks, the community store. Uh, but that's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll show you how to do the manual install today. So first thing you got to do is de go to the latest release, which... Is linked above and grab the vacuum card.js. So we're gonna go to your config folder for your instance. And if you don't already have a www folder, you can go ahead and create it. Then you want to grab that vacuum card.js and drag it into that folder. 
Before we customize the Lovelace dashboard, if you if this is a new instance and you haven't enabled it already, you have to enable advanced mode, which you can click on the configuration and it tells you to go to your profiles page. So go to the profiles page for your user and enable advanced mode right here. This opens up all the extended features that you need for these type of uh, items. So go to configuration, level dashboards, resources, and hit the plus button. Then under URL, it should be slash local slash vacuum card .js. So that www folder, when referenced by the Loveless UI or outside users, is the local directory. So we're just referencing that JavaScript module that we had previously loaded. And then obviously the resource type is JavaScript module. And then click Create. Now you'll need to restart Home Assistant. So go to Configuration, scroll down to Server Controls, and Restart. That will <coughs> refresh the Loveless UI and allow you to use this new custom card. Now that Home Assistant's back up again, we can go ahead and add the custom card. So click on the three dots, click Edit Dashboard, then we'll hit the plus symbol to add a new card, and scroll down to the bottom, we should have Custom colon Vacuum Card. So it's already selected our vacuum cleaner because we only have one, and then hit Save to load in the default card. <clears throat> now one thing to note is if you, when you go in to add the custom card, if it doesn't show up in there, sometimes I noted on these new instances that the it's not loading the resources properly so you can manually add the resources by clicking the three dots go to raw configuration editor and add this little bit of code down here uh, resources colon with the url pointing to that vacuum card and the type is module you will get a, a pop-up saying you should do this in the ui but this will work uh, to force it to utilize that vacuum card and you can go in and add it uh, you'll notice the card looks a little different than the one in uh, in the uh, author's description. Uh, it's missing the uh, filter timing information. Uh, to add that, you can hit edit and go to, you, as it notes here, setting actions and state uh, stat options can only be done through the code editor. So we'll click the code editor and then I'll pop over to his code here and copy this section right here, um, starting at stats and down to the next tab starting at stats and down to the um, cleaning here. We'll copy those, pop back over to our instance and paste them directly below the default information. That will add in the filter, side brush, main brush, and sensor timeouts. You can also add actions down here in his example, but I don't have those configured right now. Click save and then close. Now you can see the card is fully configured and you're able to start the vacuum, do a locate where it'll tell you where it is and then also dock it all from the controls here. You can also click on the card to bring up the extended information to make changes to, like, to the fan speed and things. Now I'll show you how to add the map card from the Mi Home app into your Loveless UI. All right, so the last item I will show you is this custom Lovelace map card um, by GitHub user Pitor Machowski. I'm sure I butchered that and I apologize. Um, it allows you to load the map from that you can see in the Mi Home app and be able to see it in your Loveless UI. In addition, you'll be able to tell where the robot is and its current cleaning process. You can also, uh, as these examples show here, you can have you can tell the robot to move to a specific location. You can define an area for the robot to clean. You can define zones that if you where you want the, the vacuum to clean. Now, this component requires two parts. The first that we're going to load in here is just the custom Loveless interface that you can use to control the robot, but it also requires a map that needs to be pulled out of the Xiaomi Mi Home app. So first we're going to load in the required components for the control, then we'll load the camera that pulls the map from the Mi Home app. So as it says in the instructions here, we want to go ahead and download from GitHub. So I'll go up here to the top and just grab the entire code as a zip file. So as before, it wants us to grab these those four files we saw before and add them to this directory. So I'll pop back into my configuration directory, go under the www, go to new folder, custom lovelace, 
and then Xiaomi vacuum map card. And then we'll copy those files that we pulled from the GitHub master under the DIST folder. Grab those and drag them into that Xiaomi folder. And they're in there. And then we need to add these into the resources as before. So you can go in, like we saw before, go into configuration, all list dashboards, resources, add, and just paste in the directory. And of course, it's a JavaScript module, so hit create. So before we can use the new custom map Loveless interface, we need to grab the Xiaomi Cloud Map Extractor. So again, by that same author as the custom component, the custom Loveless component, uh, he has a, a map extractor that pulls this map from the Miho map. So again, he has a quick installation with hacks, but with this example, we'll go ahead and just do the manual install. So for this install, um, this will be considered custom components. So let's open up the back into our configuration directory. Here at the root of the configuration directory, we'll create a new folder called custom components, which is necessary for any custom component to be installed for Home Assistant. And then we want to create a new folder and call it Xiaomi Cloud Map Extractor. Then we'll grab the zip file of the code, open it up, open up the custom components, and then there's already a custom component folder in here, Xiaomi Cloud Map Extractor, and these are the files that are required. So you can go ahead and drag these into your that configuration folder and verify the files are there. Okay, all the files are in the right folder. So again, we'll have to go in and restart Home Assistant to reload the custom configuration. Now while that's restarting, a few things that you're gonna be required to have. We already had the token and the IP address from the previous steps. However, you need to include your username and password for your Mi Home application. So what we wanna do is jump back into our configuration.yaml so in this case, I'll pop over to the secrets.yaml and we need to add two new items in here. So we'll call it me home user. And me home password. Then save that and then in our configuration.yaml, we need to grab his example code he has here. So this will be considered a camera. So you'll need to add this under the camera platform. So if you have that as a separate file, then you can do that or you can just grab it. Um, you can just add it to your existing configuration.yaml. So since I don't, this, this instance does not have a camera def defined here, I'll just go ahead and paste the whole thing in. And again, make sure your indents are correct. And then make sure to update these to match your secrets.yaml. So um, I already have the host file, or the, sorry, the host IP address, the secret, and then username and password. All right, once everything looks good, go ahead and save the configuration.yaml. And we'll pop back into our Home Assistant, check the configuration. Oh, yep, looks like I made an error. I forgot to delete the secret. So we'll pop back into the secret.yaml file. I'm sorry, we'll pop back into the configuration file and delete the secret definition here since I actually just have the host IP address in the file itself. So I'll swap back, check config. All right, so our configuration's valid. Go ahead and restart Home Assistant. And then when it comes back up again, we'll go grab that camera and make sure it works. All right, Home Assistant is back. So if we wanna make sure that it's functioning, we'll click over here to states and there we go. 
There's the Xiaomi Cloud Map Extractor. If we click on that, there's my house. So you can see the last path that the vacuum took. So I actually stopped it early this last time and told it to go home. That's why there's a section that's blank here. So now we actually have the map, so you can include this anywhere in your UI by clicking Edit Dashboard, New Card. You can make it a picture glance, so you can change the camera entity to this, and then if you wanted to add in any sensors below here that you'd like. I just left it kitchen, but obviously that's not correct. So that's the base card. So if you're okay with just the base, image you can leave that there or if we want to use that custom loveless component we just need to add it to our resources list here so under the resources we just need to add this url here so we'll copy that and again make sure your indents are correct and save that all right now that we have added the resource to our loveless ui we want to go ahead and add the custom levels component by clicking the plus button here, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking manual. Now, I have, I'll, I'll place this code on my website because it's kind of a cut down version of it. Um, but if you look, the items that are required in here are obviously the type, the entity of the vacuum that you want to call. In this case, it's the Xiaomi vacuum. Since we're using the custom card, the custom map extractor from the same author, he states in there we don't need to add calibration points because if this was, if we were trying to calibrate the vacuum cleaner to the existing image, we would need to define different locations on this map for the map to match up with the UI. But since it's all integrated together, you can mark the calibration points as null, but you do need to define the map underscore camera as that camera from the last step that shows the image of the map itself. And then camera calibration is set to true because it's gonna extract that information from this camera here. So that's the basics, what you need to do. Click save and it'll add the card on here. Now from here, you can set the mode of the vacuum to go to a specific location where everywhere you click, it'll send the vacuum to that particular location. Or you can go ahead and define custom zones to clean up and then click the times button and then click start and it will tell the vacuum to head to those zones and just clean them exclusively. So this gives you an extra degree of control, practically replacing that of the Mi Home app. So those are the custom components that I'd recommend installing after you set your vacuum up. All right, so there you go. Now you've got a fully functioning vacuum that's been placed into Home Assistant that you can now automate. Some of the automations that I have are when the house is empty. So when our phones are away and the house goes into away mode, the vacuum hasn't ran that day, it'll go ahead and launch the vacuum and run it, uh, run it in the house while we're gone. And you can also set it, well, when, it, the, when your house detects that you're home, go ahead and dock the vacuum so it doesn't get in your way. I hope this video was helpful for you. I had to dig through quite a few different methods to figure out the best way of integrating it in. I found some issues with the newer vacuums and the Roborock app, and so it ended up being better just to go to the Mi Home app. So, so if you found this video helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the channel that helps me know that my videos are actually making a difference. Um, give the video a thumbs up. Again, if you found the video boring or unhelpful, give it a thumbs down. In the comments below, please suggest future videos. I've got a few more coming up, some reviews and some other integrations. I've also got my long promised, I know, uh, getting started video series uh, in the works right now. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.